My name is Josh Graves, and I'm author of The Feast, How to Serve Jesus to a Famished World. Part church manifesto, part autobiography, part exploration of spiritual disciplines, this book invites you to taste and see the ways in which God is working in the world. So come and have a place at the table. I invite people to imagine Jesus in his original context and the way in which his life attracted others to a different way of understanding justice and beauty and spirituality and forgiveness. It's too easy to create this safe for the whole family, Mr. Rogers with the beard Jesus, who makes very few demands of our life. But in fact, the Jesus of the New Testament had this curious habit of always challenging us to engage the world. Part of his mission to bring heaven to us was to help us understand what it means to be human in the first place and why that's good news for everybody, even, even people who don't think it's good news. To care deeply about justice, and truth, and beauty, and relationships, and forgiveness. He challenges us to really be intentional about the things that last in life. We realize that the way of Jesus is more relevant for our time and our culture than any other story that's being told. Part two of the book takes this understanding of Jesus that we, we explore in part one and asks, okay, if this was Jesus' life then, what does Jesus' life look, look like now as we live it out in the church? And what I find is it becomes this incredibly amazing task, really an invitation to creatively think about what would it look like to live Jesus' mission here and so I, again, invite people to consider that maybe the word gospel that we use might, might mean more than just what happens to us when we die. So the church asks those big questions. How are different humans being dehumanized? How are they losing their image of God status, regardless of their politics or of their skin color, of their creed? All of the ways in which this world oppresses us and kind of dehumanizes us, the gospel wants to bring life. The gospel is that oasis in the desert that says, no, Jesus came to give life and life abundant so that we would be able to be the human that God created us to be. So as we think about what it means to live Jesus' life today as he lived his life then, as we're the, the embodiment of Jesus, all kinds of things become important for us. The reason why the church cares about poverty in Jinji, Uganda, is because there's a day coming when poverty won't exist. The reason why the church cares about women who have been abused is because there's a day coming when abuse will cease. The reason why the church cares about orphans is because there's a day coming when orphans will all have parents. And I think this becomes a really playful and imaginative, full of love and joy and laughter to think about being the church in 2009 or 2020, it is an invitation to take the Jesus stories and intersect them or collide them, mesh them with our world today. I think this is an exciting time to be alive, to be following the way of Jesus. So we find ourselves then in this, in this tension, in this in-between place where we long to eat this meal with our great teacher, our Lord, but, but in the meantime, in the meantime we have scripture, we have the words of God for us to nourish, to devour, and to consume. And here's the thing, when we consume them, scriptures give us the energy to be God's person in the world. Whether you write stories or you find yourself homeless on the street, you're a school teacher or a doctor or a surgeon or a garbage collector or an artist or a mechanic or a work at home mom, this story becomes our story and we digest it, we consume it 
It becomes the source, the gospel food that fills our bellies, giving us the energy. These stories are the catalyst to help us be the human that God created us to be, to live in God's big world.